the prayings that God asked for us, mandated for us, is for us. The conditioning of our bad ego and that to tame the wild beast. But Allah in Hadith al-Qudsi describes that once they committed to their obligatory worshipness and they begin to do the worshipness through love and affection, the non-obligatory, I become the hearing in which they hear, the eyes in which they see, the breath in which they breathe, the hand in which they touch, the feet in which they move. Means that we do what's ordered by us as an expression of taming our wildness. But that's not where the secret lies. People whom feel that they prayed and they accomplished a great accomplishment, that was ordered. As if we tell you that this building's on fire, run out. Means you saved yourself from coming against what the Divine has ordered. So we do what God has ordered. We pray but we don't put any significance and think that our prayers will be opening all realities and opening every type of uh, blessing. But what we do of our prayers we do but what brings the immensity of blessings is these praisings, this expression of love for the Divinely Presence. Like the birds that praise throughout the day and at night and God mentions them in Qur'an. Like the birds that praise me in the morning and praise me at the night. Means even the dhikr of the birds got mentioned in Holy Qur'an because of their station. Allah didn't mention the birds are praying and making their salah. But a creature that actually praises got mentioned by Allah in Holy Qur'an. Immense station, immense reality. So. Awliya come into our lives and teach that that which you've been ordered to do, you did to save your own soul. There's no trophy for that. So we negate ourselves, negate our actions, I pray because you ordered me to pray. And that's to discipline myself and take the wildness of my beast. But it's true beauty didn't come until we begin to praise. And we raise our vibration and express our love and thankfulness for the Divine. In a world in which everything tries to take away that thankfulness and, and the, the biggest struggle is to be thankful. Because the, the demonic force, the negative force all around continuously whispering within us not to be thankful. Your life is bad, your life is difficult, everything around is difficult, this is bad and we live in a society that just complains. Complain, complain, complain. When we said before, children can complain. That's not the way of manhood and, and maturity. When we say maturity or manhood, it's for both feminine and masculine. Doesn't matter. The way of maturity towards the Divine is not to look a wall and say, I found a crack. Or to live in a life in which the whole wall is cracked. But rijal and maturity is to look at a cracked wall and find its immense beauty. If you can do that, Allah is happy with you. Although I walk on a broken path, I, my head is upright and straight. Not that I uh, just keep looking at everything, oh, everything's bad, everything's bad, everything bad. That's all negativity wants is to have a society that just complains. So means then awliya come into our life and express that the, the, the greatest gift is when you praise upon the Divine, thanking all of these nasheeds, if you read the English, these are all thankfulness. That we're thanking Allah for one sending us a messenger whom's guiding us and till today is guiding us. And this is an expression of appreciation, we love you, we love all the Prophets, we love what they sent for us and we are thankful Ya Rabbi, thank you, thank you, thank you. And let my life be something that no matter how cracked it may be, I'll find the flower in the crack. Right? Said so that even in a concrete jungle there's got to be something that grows through that concrete. And that's our lives. Everything sometimes may feel like concrete, it's just everything poured upon us. But the wise one is not that realizes everything's destroyed, 
but to find the beauty in something. Focus on that beauty and turn that into an entire garden. Then we look and say, oh I'm not as sick as other people. I'm not impoverished as other people, I have the ability to eat, others may not even have anything to eat, to find the goodness in what we have. And Allah's promise, thank me, be thankful and I give you much more. So then our life was not to complain but to find the goodness, praise the Divine and Allah send His bounty and His grace upon our souls and make everything to be beatific. For the one whom praises finds everything in life to be beatific. And we pray for that quality and that dress, means these praisings and these sessions of praisings have such an immense energy and vibration upon the soul, dressing the soul, changing the energy and the frequency of the soul so that it vibrates at a higher resonance. And at that higher resonance, what happens to the lower resonance? It shatters it. If our lives don't have praising, what happens? We're just listening to music, we're listening to gossip on television that's all backbiting and then what happens? Your resonance goes down. When your resonance and vibration goes down then every negative creature is going in moving into you, resonating within your frequency. And as a result people become down and lower and lower and lower until every type of difficulty begins to overtake them. And awliyaullah come and teach within our life that if you raise your frequency, not only by raising it, you're shattering the lower frequency. Because it's such a powerful energy that when you begin to praise, begin to, to make zikr of Allah begin to read Qur'an, begin to make salawats and, and all of these praisings is a frequency and an energy that shatters everything negative. Because Qul Jal Haq, Allah say, when the truth comes falsehood is perishing. The truth is what? is praising anything positive, anything from the Divine is truth, not from the earth. So anything we do from the Divine has a truth in it, has a reality in it, has a praise in it. That one Allah described, when the truth comes falsehood perishes and falsehood by its nature is zahukan, it's dust, it's nothing to stand in the presence of the Almighty. So praising brings an energy that destroys every type of negativity and falsehood. We pray that Allah inspire us towards our praising. Anytime anyone's down, depressed or sad, this app of ours has prayers. Read the prayers. The app has the books and the nasheeds of all these praisings and all in transliterations and Arabic and English for everyone's language. They sit there and just recite them, you don't even have to sing them. Just reciting them so that that energy begins to change our energy, take away negativity, take away depression, take away sadness, take away ungratefulness so that that energy will come and begin to destroy the negativity and bring the positivity. If we can master that in life then we mastered everything. We said, we described many times before in seclusion and in the training of seclusion the evilness and bad energy controls your mind. But God gave you a power to take your mind back. If you allow it to control, it will control the narrative of your existence. So they come into your mind, pose something as, as negative and shows your whole life, because these are analogies, your whole life is like a garbage dump. And that's all negativity wants to do is it's all garbage. So then you begin to complain about everything. But it means you lost your mind. So in spiritual training regain your mind, do your chanting, do your energy practices, do your breathing and at least say that if it is a garbage dump there's at least one flower in that dump. I see the flower in that dump, I see the goodness that God has given to me and then they begin to focus on that flower, focus on that goodness that God gave me breath, God gave me eyesight, God gave me many things. These are the flowers of my existence. Don't think about everything bad, 
But think about you're not blind coming here. Then how difficult would it be to find this center? And that you're not crippled and you have no two legs to get to the center. That you don't have a tongue to eat and to swallow means there's always a way to find a flower within it. And if we can find that flower, focused on it and then turn that flower in an entire garden and that becomes then the ability to change the narrative that's being sent to you. That's what we said, that they are attacked, only are attacked in, the, in their seclusions by energies. And the energies come what we described before like rats, they sit and meditate and God releases a negative energy of their character and the, the devils that are in the seclusion with them to train them, the nefarious beings that are under God's control makes that negative energy like a rat and begin to attack them. And through their training that they've been trained with their shaykhs, the shaykh comes into their heart with a firmness that control your mind. Means bring your faith back, Allah's with you, God's with you, control your mind. These are not rats, these are not rats, they're angels. And begin to change your perception of what's coming to you as an energy, make it to be positive. Say that I'm feeling, I'm feeling even the things are like touching my skin because everything is going to be like a, an optical illusion in your seclusion and many people have graphic dreams like that. And they say, change the narrative that those feelings are, are the wings of angels playing with you. And then your mind, your heart begins to push your mind to flip it in a different way. Then that servant now has a strong heart of faith that can control what his mind is seeing, control what's coming to his mind and whatever narrative shaitan is trying to put upon them and change them. Because we said shaitan is not coming into your heart, he doesn't have access to your heart. Evilness has access to your head because your head is like a television screen, anybody can hijack it. There's no lock on your head. At night you just come tap your head and begin to send you all sorts of dreams because they're energy beings. They just come tap you and all you're dreaming all sorts of left and right I- issues. So means then they can control what you're thinking. So our life is about keep it positive, keep it loving, focus on the flower and say, Ya Rabbi thank you, thank you, thank you for this beautific flower and when you're thankful God opens your ability to see the whole thing is a garden and there's maybe one piece of trash, I'll take that and throw that out. But my life is a garden and it's beautific and that's what the world is missing now. Everybody down, gossiping, backbiting and every type of negativity like an ocean, a black wave of a, of a cloud of ocean that take and wash everybody away in the immensity of negativities. We pray that Allah just strengthen the heart and grant us to see the beauty of the garden He's given to us and to turn our whole life into that beautific garden inshaAllah. Bi hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa wa bi siri Surat al-Fatiha.